Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. A very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. And welcome to my video in defense of Green Lantern and Martin Campbell. Please subscribe to the channel, smash the subscribe button, smash the like button, and follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. You know what? I often think about if, what if Green Lantern had been a success? This would have been success for DC and WB, wouldn't it? This would have been the beginning, the very beginning of a DC cinematic universe before the DCEU, which would have been a really good thing. We would have got there before a Marvel Studios and Disney. It would have been amazing. And I think if it was a successful movie in terms of Green Lantern, then Nolan and Singer would have been forced to integrate their movies afterwards, uh, their Superman and their Batman, into this new DC Cinematic Universe. Now, I know that Green Lantern came after those films. Um, now, it's very, very interesting, isn't it? Because um, Superman Returns, um, that's, that kind of universe only got one movie. Um, Chris Nolan got his trilogy. Chris Nolan was very resistant to being part of a cinematic universe. But if Green Lantern was successful, Chris wouldn't have had a choice. So I often think about this. I'm going to be honest. I really like the Green Lantern movie. I really do. I think it's a really big, big and good beginning. Um, there are issues within the film. Of course, it's not the perf most perfect comic book movie, but I don't think it's bad. And I don't think it's a terrible movie. And I don't and I will never understand why this film just made over 200 million at the time. They spent a lot of money on this movie. Now, let's talk about Martin Campbell. Martin Campbell is one of the great directors, as especially one of the great action directors. He directed Goldeneye, the James Bond film starring Piers Brosnan. Piers' first Bond movie. Did you watch the watch along last night with Piers Brosnan? Wasn't that great? Um, and then he also directed probably one of the best films ever and one of the best Bond films ever, uh, Casino Royale. What a film that is. So um, Goldeneye and Casino Royale, come on. If you haven't seen those Bond movies, go and see them. It's kind of evidence that Martin Campbell is a great director. So what went wrong? I must admit I was taken aback when Martin's name was mentioned with Green Lantern. Although I do admire him as a great director, one of the great blockbuster directors, definitely. Those two films I've just listed, amazing. But he'd never really had much experience with CGI, computer-generated effects, right? So I always was kind of weirded out by this choice. I knew he was a great director, but I thought there was other directors who probably had more experience with VFX and CGI. So it was a weird choice in terms of that. But then when you look at the opening sequence in space on OHA, the opening sequences, they're stunning. And that CGI still looks amazing today. I've got the director's cut. Well, it's about 10 extra minutes. It's not much of a director's cut. But those opening sequences, and it's basically basically pure VFX, is brilliant. So I don't think anyone can criticise OHA or how the space, how space looked, how space looked. I thought the planets, OHA and all of that looked amazing. The effects were brilliant. I think the issue and the controversy came around um, the CGI Green Lantern costumes. For all the people from OHA, all the characters, right, all the Lantern Corps, right? Now, I admit the CGI costumes do look cartoony. It was probably a bad choice, but I think back then VFX was such an exciting new technology that you, you would probably use it a bit too much. I think it's a bit like the Star Wars prequels. This was a new toy for George, and he'd been wanting to use this technology all his filmmaking life. And he probably got carried away. I still love the CGI, though, in the prequels. And I mean, it's, it's it, again, a lot more cartoony than we've got now because the technology's been perfected. And you've got to understand that we were at the beginning. We were at the precipice of VFX and CGI. So you've got to expect some missteps. And of course, those of us who have never used it, I've used VFX, I've used CGI. It's a very exciting technology to use even today. 
Um, Because you can do things that you could never do 20, 30, 40 years ago. I mean, I'm sure Dick Donner would would have bit your hand off to be able to use CGI and VFX and the computers and the technology uh, that they use today. Um, Because it took him nearly three years to do Superman the movie and the the bloody thing nearly killed him. But what an amazing achievement he made. Um, But so, yes, I will say the costumes don't look brilliant. I don't think they look crap either. Um, definitely it should have been a real costume and that was a mistake but I don't think it's a decision that really kills the film so I was surprised by the level of vehement attack on Martin about that that choice that creative choice that he made and when you look at the cast of Green Lantern and um, my memory is crap so I've got this on IMDB Ryan Reynolds obviously Blake Lively And, of course, the one success of Green Lantern was the relationship of Ryan and Blake Lively in real life because she played Carol Ferris. And, of course, he is the main Green Lantern. He's, you know, he's Earth's Green Lantern. And they're obviously in love in the film. These two characters have grown up together in the film. So the success story is their relationship. And they're actually still together as far as I know. Did they meet on the movie? I don't know if they were together already. Anyway, Blake is a great kid. And I thought her performance was brilliant. She's a brilliant Carol Ferris. I think she works as Carol Ferris. Um, And then you've got Peter Sarsgaard. For crying out loud, he's going to be in the Batman. In fact, Peter is amazing in this film. He he, he plays Hector, of course. And he plays Tim Robbins' son. Um, Is it Tim Robbins' son he plays? I can't remember, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is. Yeah. He does play Tim Robbins' son, doesn't he? I think so, anyway. I haven't seen the movie for a long time. I suppose I should have refreshed my memory before doing a video. Very unprofessional. But anyway, I mean, do you know that Taika Waititi, the director of Four Rangarot, is in this movie? And he plays Ryan Reynolds' best mate in it. I mean, Mark Strong. And Mark Strong gives, um, no irony here, but gives a very strong performance as Sinestro. Sinestro is an iconic DC character, and he is brilliant. And, I mean, it just goes on. You've got J.O. Sanders, who was also in JFK and plays Cole Ferris. And then you've got Tamura Morrison, who actually plays Aquaman's dad, if I remember rightly, in Aquaman. You've got Angela Bassett, who played Tina Turner in What's Love Got to Do With It. It really is a great cast. And you go down John Tierney, Michael Clark Duncan, Jeffrey Rush. It really is a great cast. And, it, and the list goes on. Let's, it, Clancy Brown's in it as well. Just seeing if we've got any other. Uh, Jenna Craig. It, it really is a brilliant cast, you know. I mean, I could go down the list forever. Uh, yeah, really, really great cast. And um, so it had the cast on its side. And again, I'll say it again, Martin Campbell, a really proficient director. And... You know, I mean, Ryan Reynolds is is a great actor. I thought Ryan Reynolds did a great job with the role. And I mean, if it was successful, that, I mean, we wouldn't have had Deadpool, would we? We wouldn't, he'd still be Green Lantern now. I mean, that's how nuts it is, right? And and the DC Cinematic Universe, the Ryan Reynolds version, he he was going to be Robert Downey Jr. Everything was there. Everything was there to have a great first movie. Uh, I do, I like, I like the Green Lantern movie and I thought it would have been a great, beginning for a DC cinematic universe and I like the film as I say I love everything they did on Oha I think it's brilliant I think it's um amazing I mean again I look at this cast and it's just phenomenal if we if we go to Michael you know he plays Kilowog you know Michael Clark Duncan plays Kilowog right and Kilowog is such an important character in the Green Lantern mythos and you see the thing is with Green Lantern it's not just part of the DC uh, comics verse universe right it's also a universe of its own let's be honest about it the characters in there it's it's amazing and if they got that film right and if it was successful the potential in expanding let alone a dc cinematic universe but a green lantern cinematic universe would be very exciting now jeff johns is is involved with the uh new hbo max green lantern series live action really excited for that I don't know if his movie is still going ahead, but you could absolutely have a, a, a TV um, streaming series of Green Lantern and expand it to a movie verse. As I say, this could be DC Star Wars. It's an amazing universe. Go and read the graphic novels. Go and read the comics. They're amazing. 
They really are. And this was some big potential. So I think, just like I thought at the time of Superman Returns, uh, Superman Returns and Green Lantern have got a lot in common. They have issues, but I don't think those films have got any issues that can take away your enjoyment. I enjoy those films. They're a great first step. And you're talking about 2008, 2009. You know, and we know that um, Brian Singer and um, the original Spider-Man film, Brian Singer did X-Men. And then uh, what's his name? I forgot the horror movie director who did the, the first three Spider-Man films. So they were already quite fashionable, but they weren't what they are now. And, and again, no one was proficient in special effects for superhero movies back then. So I do feel that I, I do I feel that Martin Campbell was very very unlucky with that film. I think he did a really good job, and I think that film has got some excellent moments. And they really could have, whatever went wrong, they could have put right in the second film. So they could have, you know, they could have made a proper Green Lantern costume. So I don't think the film was so bad that you can turn around and say, no, nah, give up on it. The problem was for Warner Brothers is justifying a film that only made 200 million at the global box office. Or was it domestically? I can't remember. 200, I, I can't, I think it was at the global box office. So it's not a lot of money. Back then, superhero movies weren't really making that much. I know The Dark Knight made a billion. I know that. It was a little bit after Green Lantern. Um, but at the end of the day, Green, Green Lantern uh, was kind of an experiment, I suppose. It was an expensive experiment. I think when you've invested so much, I think sometimes you have to invest a little bit more on a new project than an active project to, to kind of get it off the road. And I think... Even though people weren't happy with it, I think Warner Brothers were considering it for months and months and months, whether they should do a sequel or not. Um, but it is difficult when you start off on such a negative footing because the opinion of the fans, the consumer, the critics was it wasn't a good film. But I will defend this film to my dying day. I've, I mean, it's been a long time since I've seen it, but I enjoy this film. I think this, I mean, we've got... Angela Bassett as Amanda Waller. And what a great Amanda Waller she is. So they're starting a universe here. And I think, despite what people said about it, and despite the box office, I think this is the problem with Warner Brothers. Um, I think when you look at Iron Man 2, although the box office was good, the response to Iron Man 2 wasn't positive. Iron Man 2 isn't a particularly good sequel or a particularly good film. But they weren't about to just, you know, kill the franchise dead. And I think this is the problem with Warner Brothers. They're too reactive to what the consumer and what critics think. And, and I think well, I like what Marvel Studios did in the early days. There was a lot of criticism, a lot. There was even criticism of the first Iron Man film. There was criticism of Iron Man 2. All those early films, before the first Avengers movie, there was a lot of Marvel fans hating on the franchise, hating. But it fell on deaf ears. You know, Fade was focused. They, you know, he admitted it was difficult. He says it all the time. And I think in the early days of Green Lantern, instead of being reactive like they were with Man of Steel, Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad, if you focus on the job at hand, at the job ahead, instead of listening to everything what people are saying, you can have a successful franchise. I think Green Lantern should have had a sequel where they learn from their mistakes. They would have made a much better movie because they already got the kind of look of OR and that universe beautifully. We we even had a post credit scene of Sinestro. Jesus Christ, this was a great setup. You know, DC the DC film universe, this Green Lantern movie actually had a post credit scene before the MCU. It was them who started it off. This could have been a beginning of something beautiful. But oh no, again and again and again, Warner Brothers are too reactive. I really like the Green Lantern film. I think for a first kind of special effects movie, Martin Campbell did a great job. And I think it should have got a sequel where they learn from their mistakes. Um, that's my defense of the movie. I want to know what you think. Genuinely, I'm not just saying this. I want your comments down below about the Green Lantern movie and Martin Campbell. Was he the right director? Was he the wrong director? Did you like the cast? Don't you like the cast? Um, let me know. What do you think is of Ryan Reynolds? I think he was great. I think it could have been the beginning of something special. And I'm just very sorry 
that it wasn't. Because I believe the Green Lantern is our Star Wars. It's DC's and Warner Brothers Star Wars. And the potential is there is to create a beautiful, self-contained franchise within a franchise. Comment down below. Like, share and subscribe. I'll be back tomorrow with more videos. See you again soon.